everyone, Dr. E here. Now I realize that I'm really getting old because for some reason I thought I did a video on the lymphatic system, but apparently I didn't. Um, and thank you for the student who reminded me. Um, she's like, I don't see a lymphatic system on your channel. Do you have one? And I looked through it and I didn't see it. And I checked all my videos and I didn't see it. So uh, apparently I just forgot to make a video on the lymphatic system. So here it is. Now I do want to point out that you need to know this topic for both T6 and T7. Um, it doesn't matter which one you're taking, you have to know a little bit about the lymphatic system. All right, so let's dive into it. The first slide is just a quick overview on the different parts of the lymphatic system. So the whole system is a network of lymphatic vessels, lymph nodes, lymphoid organs, and tissues. And of course, you're gonna find immune cells in this system that um, perform the, the protection function. I will have some diagrams in just a second so you can see what the different components look like. All right, now in terms of functions, number one, the system picks up and transports tissue fluid back to the blood vessels. Now, once that fluid enters the lymphatic vessels, it's called lymph. So the fluid circulating in the lymphatic system is known as lymph, and it's a light yellow color fluid. Um, this function is very important, and it actually provides a basis for the second function. So on the next slide, I'll provide more details on the first function. So don't worry, I will explain how this thing works. And number two, as the lymph circulates in the lymphatic system, um, there will be lymphoid organs and tissues, right? They house the immune cells, so those immune cells can um, take out the foreign entities, right? Because a lot of them are uh, pathogens that can make us sick. So this is how the lymphatic system is really part of the kind of general defense system of the body, right? So that's why usually textbooks include the lymphatic system in the immune system chapter. But ATI likes to put the lymphatic system together with the cardiovascular system. But it really, it's, um, I guess the first function is related to the circulatory system, but the second function is related to the immune functions. All right, now let's look at the, the first function more closely so that you know how um, the lymphatic system transports excess fluid and returns that to blood, and why is it so important? Now here, I'm gonna have a question for you. So think about this. Do you think our blood vessels are leak proof, meaning that nothing can leak out of the blood vessels? Now, it, <laughs> the answer is actually no. Now, when you look at the blood vessels, the smaller they get, the thinner their walls are. Right? especially when you look at the smallest blood vessels, which are known as capillaries. So these, you know, these, the, this is actually a network of capillaries. So capillaries are the smallest blood vessels. And capillaries um, have a wall that's made of just one layer of cells. So water and some of the smaller molecules like ions can definitely leak through or well, come through the walls, right? Leak out of the blood. Now, if you remember, there are two main components in blood, right? The first one is known as a plasma. And basically that's just the fluid where the liquid part of blood. And then the second component is called formed element. So formed elements include all the blood cells, right? The uh, red blood cells, oops, that should be B, red blood cells, white blood cells, and red blood cells are also known as erythrocytes. White blood cells are known as leukocytes. And we also have uh, platelets, right? Okay, so these blood cells or fragments of cells, those are known as formed elements. Now these cells and the fragments cannot go through the capillary walls. So they stay in the blood, but the fluid part, right? Mostly water can definitely uh, come out of the blood vessels. So they will leave the, the capillaries, right? And then it's gonna, that fluid is going to accumulate in the interstitial 
space. So I have a definition here. The interstitial space is really just the space between cells, right? If you look at um, the diagram here, that's one cell, that's another cell, that's another cell. So there's a space in between these cells, right? So the fluid will come out of the capillaries and the fluid doesn't have anywhere to go, right? So, you know, it, the fluid is just gonna accumulate in the interstitial space. And if you have too much of that fluid, then you're gonna get edema. And edema is basically just, you know, swallowing, swallowing of the tissues. So you don't want any swallowing, right, in your body. So you need a mechanism to remove the uh, excess fluid coming out of the blood vessels and somehow return that fluid back to the blood, right? So that's the job for the lymphatic system. They will pick up the excessive fluid and they're gonna return that fluid back to blood, okay? So in this diagram, you see blood vessels, right? So you have arterioles, arterioles become smaller uh, and basically the network of capillaries. And then on the other side, you have uh, venules, right? That's where, uh, the blood will be drained. So the blood, goes th the blood goes through the capillaries. So you have a gas exchange, you have nutrients and waste exchange, and then the blood drains into venues and venues become uh, bigger uh, veins, right? And then veins will return blood back to the heart. You can see in between the arterioles and the venues where the capillaries are in the tissues, you also have these uh, vessels which are in green. So these green vessels, those are lymphatic vessels. So the terminals of these vessels, like here, like up here, you know, all these terminals, they are open. So they can pick up all the excess of fluid from the interstitial space. And then just like blood vessels, right? These lymphatic vessels uh, will, you know, converge, become bigger, and eventually some of the uh, major lymphatic ducts will uh, return all that fluid, which is lymph, back to blood, and they become plasma again. All right, now here is a diagram to show you this network of lymphatic vessels. Now, this is not the best diagram because it doesn't have all the uh, lymphoid tissues and organs, for example, it doesn't have tonsils, which are a pretty important part of the lymphatic system. So I just want you to look at the green lines so that you have a general idea of, you know, what the, the network looks like, right? So all these green lines, those are lymphatic vessels. And once the lymphatic vessels pick up the lymph, pick up the fluid, it's going to circulate that fluid through this network. Now, the fluid is going to go through uh, structures called the lymph nodes. So all these kind of uh, bean-shaped structures, those are lymph nodes. As lymph goes through each lymph node, uh, it's going to be inspected and foreign pathogens will be filtered out. So this is a definitely a defense and protection mechanism. And you can see that lymph nodes are concentrated in certain areas, right? Certain areas that are open to the external environment um, that are easy uh, for foreign entities to enter. So for example, you have uh, cervical lymph nodes, right? Over here, because you have the nasal cavity, you have the oral cavity that are connected to the environment where uh, pathogens can enter. You also have these uh, inguinal lymph nodes over here, right? Because the, uh, the genitals are open to the external environment. Now, in addition to that, you also have another area where you have clusters of lymph nodes, right, very concentrated, and that's the axillary lymph nodes over here. For a lot of the breast cancer patients, survivors, oftentimes their axillary lymph nodes will be removed along with some of the lymphatic vessels here. And that a lot of times will create a problem called lymphedema because you don't have these lymphatic vessels to pick up the excess of fluid, right? These patients will experience swelling um, in the arm and sometimes it can be very, very painful. All right, now this is a better diagram of the different components of the lymphatic system. And I also have a table to summarize some of the components in this system.
Um, so a lot of textbooks actually um, include red bone marrow as a part of the lymphatic system because a red bone marrow is where the B cells mature. B cells or T cells are the main uh, immune cells in the lymphatic system along with macrophages. And the thymus, that's also considered a part of the lymphatic system because it's a site for T cell maturation. Thymus is found right here. And as a person ages, thymus uh, shrinks over time with ages. Uh, lymph nodes, we talk about lymph nodes, right? There are a few areas that you need to be aware of. Cervical lymph nodes, axillary lymph nodes, and inguinal lymph nodes. And I remember um, with my previous dentist, every time I go see him, he would, you know, uh, touch my neck and to see if there's any swelling. Because the swelling of lymph nodes usually indicate infections. All right, spleen um, is often considered as part of the lymphatic system because it does provide a site for lymphocyte proliferation, uh, and that's related to function number three. And we also have some tissues called molt, lymphoid tissues called molt. And these include the tonsils. Uh, and if you have trouble with tonsils, you know that every time, you know, right before you're getting sick, your tonsils will become swollen and it can be very painful to swallow. And that's because the tonsils are pretty efficient at picking up pathogens. So, you know, before those pathogens really make you sick, before you show any symptoms, the tonsils are, um, can be overwhelmed, um, like blocked up with those pathogens and they will swell and that can cause a lot of, you know, discomfort. Pears, patches are found in the small intestine. You, uh, you all know where the appendix is, right? So these are some of the uh, main parts of the lymphatic system. All right, now let's practice this chapter with some questions. So I'm going to have uh, two questions for you in response to case seven. These questions are going to be multiple answered questions, which means that you have to select all the correct answers, and they're going to be multiple and you cannot select any of the incorrect answers. All right, so let's get started. This is the first question. You have about 20 seconds to answer this question. Okay, which of the following is part of the function performed by the lymphatic system? Is it A, the system transports leaked plasma back to the bloodstream? That's correct, right? That's the first function we mentioned, which is very important. There is plasma loss, right? Because of blood pressure. So uh, water and some other small molecules can leak out of the blood vessels. So you need a system to pick up that excess fluid and then return it back to the blood to maintain that homeostasis. So that's the job for the lymphatic system. So A is correct. Is it B? It's a site for immune surveillance and that's correct, right? Uh, lymph can pick up some of the pathogens and as lymph circulates through uh, lymph nodes and some of the other lymph organs, um, the immune cells can monitor, right? Can inspect the lymph and um, if there are any pathogens present, then they will be alarmed, they will be alerted. Is it C, removal of foreign substances in the lymph? That's correct, right? This goes hand in hand with uh, answer B. So the immune cells can definitely filter out the foreign substances. Is it D, production of erythrocytes? No, the lymphatic system is not responsible for making red blood cells, right? That's not part of the function. So the correct answers are A, B, and C. Okay, question two, again, you have 20 seconds.
Okay, which of the following cells can be found in the lymphatic system as part of the body defense system? Again, you have to select all that apply. Is it A, lymphocytes? Definitely, right? So you can find T cells and B cells in the lymphatic system, and they're both lymphocytes. B, macrophages, that's also correct. Besides lymphocytes, you also have macrophages present in lymph nodes, lymphoid tissues, and organs, and perform that uh, immune surveillance and protection. Is it C, erythrocytes? Not really. Erythrocytes are red blood cells that can bind to oxygen and carbon dioxide. So they're involved in the functions of the blood and not the lymphatic system. What about D, leukocytes? That's also correct. And I put uh, leukocytes as one of the other choices is that uh, I saw in the T7 study manual that they mentioned leukocytes and lymphocytes. Now, keep in mind that leukocytes have multiple types of cells, right? We talk about this when we talk about the blood chapter. So leukocytes uh, consist of lymphocytes. Uh, they're similar terms, right? So make sure you know the differences. Lymphocytes, and we also have uh, neutrophil. So neutrophils is actually the most abundant type of leukocytes in the blood. Now, the neutrophils can respond to uh, tissue injuries or invasion of foreign substances. And once they leave the blood and enter the tissues, they become macrophages and they have a really big appetite for foreign invaders. And we also have monocytes. We have eosinophils, eosinophils, and we also have a basophil. Oh, okay, so those are the five types of leukocytes that you can find in the blood. All right, I just want to mention that in case you see both lymphocytes and leukocytes, Apparently, uh, ATI thinks that they're both correct. Okay, that's the end of the lymphatic system. Good job, guys. And I am glad that uh, someone reminded me about doing the video on this uh, chapter. So now um, I think I completed all the topics in T's science. So I can work on comparing T's six and T's seven. All right, again, thanks, guys, for your support. And I will see you next time.